And so, oh, look at that. After 10 seconds, we are live, which means Get I can hit that nerds! thing. Nerd! Well, there you go, guys. <laughs> Welcome to another... This, so this is a Wednesday edition of Bid Nerds. Uh, you're looking at this going, this doesn't look like Bid Nerds. <laughs> that guy's wearing a different funny, stupid-looking hat. Um, my name is John Polnick. I'm your host of Bid Nerds. This is your daily nerd out of the most interesting cars of the day. Cars and bids and bring a trailer along with my partner, Michael Deeb. Uh, so here's the thing, guys. Usually we are in different <laughs> cities. Usually Michael Deeb is a thousand miles away. I'm in Las Vegas and he's in the Bay Area. Today we are like a few meters apart, but <laughs> I, but Michael doesn't want me in his house. He just doesn't nope. like me that much. And he's like, well, look, I'll do a show with you. You, but as far as being in the same room with you, not going to do it. Uh, so we had some technical challenges this morning, actually. What's going on is that our audio, uh, you know, since we're not really equipped to have two people in the same room, we're it, it's a long story. But uh, So we apologize for me looking even worse than I usually do. I'm on his deck. It reminds me, JP, when we were in high school and somebody would call love lines to make a phone request, but if they had their radio on when they were live on the radio, the <laughs> DJ would be like, turn your radio down! It was right? just like that that universal echo that just mm -hmm. would like go to infinity and beyond. But uh, yeah. JP, it looks really cold out there. and Man, like, give me a second. Let me go turn the heat down. It's really yeah, hot. Yeah, you, you kind of I got my <laughs> beanie hat on and hey, uh, all right, guys. Well... So here it is. We're going to try to do the show anyway, and uh, thanks for hanging out with us. This is your daily nerd out on all these interesting cars that come up on all these different auction sites. It used to be that, okay, we've got, we're going to talk about four, five, six cars a day um, from maybe two different enthusiast auction sites, but now there's like 50 enthusiast auction sites. Oh my sites. god. Rad for sale still hasn't been able to launch. I don't know. I actually oh. haven't logged in to see if they were able to launch this morning. I know they're yeah. a few days behind. That's tough to do. Uh, but you got P-Car Market. You got uh, you got Hemmings. You got, I mean, there's just, uh, Mercedes has one coming out. Um, it's just, it's nuts. Everyone's dog has an enthusiast auction site now, it seems like. But uh, we're still going to find the most interesting cars on all the auction sites from all the enthusiast uh, websites websites and we're going to find the best ones to talk about and uh we uh, you know we do this every day so if you've never watched the show and you're going this is stupid usually i'm not on someone's deck okay there it is all right uh having some self-conscious issues here uh no okay so let's man, go man huh? jp that p car studio that p car market studio oh, sure man. looks nice doesn't it man yeah yeah <laughs> on long island we're gonna talk about the porsches <laughs> the Are, Porsche. do you like the porsches the porsche they're not porsches the, the <laughs> Porsches. Yeah, I know you're not into just the Porsches. I, I, I'm just, I'm waiting for him to call it a Porsche and just be like, that's it. We're done. That's it. You're out. <laughs> yeah, Porsche car market. Um... <laughs> Oh, those guys. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we when we we don't just nerd out about these cars. We actually make predictions as to what we think they're going to sell for when they hit the auction block, and uh, we keep track. We don't just throw uh, our auction predictions out there and forget about it. Willy nilly, lack of accountability, like the corporate <laughs> press. No. Yeah. We actually go back and check ourselves. So yeah. let's talk about our predictions from yesterday, Michael D. But how did we do yesterday? Uh, yesterday, you kind of even the score. It was pretty good. Um, yeah, you uh, had a great Monday, that's for sure. Monday was yeah, Monday was a pretty lopsided, maybe the most yeah. lopsided. But yesterday was pretty good. Our star car, JP, was our second visit to Hemmings Auction Platform. Mm -hmm. uh, and that becomes relevant because as Radwood, which still is not up, I just checked when you introed, uh, they're, they're delayed further. Um, when Radwood comes to market, they will be using the Hemmings auction platform. It's a licensed agreement, and uh, instead of Radwood investing the money, they just pay a monthly fee, um, and, and so let's get used to it. And so it's kind of fun that we're visiting Hemmings and checking out how that is. So the interesting, our star car yesterday was a lot on Hemmings with two brand new on MSO DeLoreans. The MSO means it's still on the manufacturer certificate of origin in that Whoever buys one or both of these cars and registers them at their local DMV, they will be the first registered owner of that car. Uh, these two cars were amazing because they were consecutive VINs and found in a barn in Southern California. One of them had about mm, 14, 1500 miles on it. The other one had less than 20 miles. But the one with less miles, JP, over the last 20 or 30 years has consistently been stripped 
for parts. Imagine DeLorean had no parts bins in the U.S. or or whatever that if people needed them, they were stripping the parts to keep their used cars on the road by taking them from arguably the most pristine uh, DeLorean in existence. Uh, so this is just a really, really bizarre lot. And, and I think you would, would agree that we're both surprised that the discovery of these two consecutive in brand new DeLoreans in a barn in Southern California wasn't national news. Uh, I just read an article, I, I, sh I shit you not, JP, yesterday that Christopher Lloyd is doing a podcast in which he's on the hunt for for DeLoreans that have been built into movie cars. Like, like he's going around and visiting people that turned them into flex capacitor wielding DeLoreans. So it's, it's amazing that with what he's doing right now with his old character as Doc uh, Brown, Doc right? Doc Brown, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that uh, Jalopnik didn't write about this lot on Hemmings. I, I, it's just really strange. Anyway, JP, uh, without further ado, that's enough of an intro on that. Um, I thought that these two cars together should bring at least 68000 and And for all intent and purposes, th this should be a six-figure lot. Um, you bet under me, which I thought was crazy. You went 56000 12 grand under me, which is bizarre. And, man, you were right on the money. JP, this lot sold. For fifty-seven thousand seven hundred fifty dollars for two consecutive brand new DeLoreans, the fifteen hundred mile car by all accounts is a runner, and the fourteen or sixteen mile car uh, is is largely a shell of itself, having been stripped for parts and is is almost incomplete. So what a weird! I don't know who to congratulate here. Like it's just a, this really really strange lot, uh, but but Hemmings had it, and there you go. Um, boy, yeah. that interface is awkward, isn't it? I mean, talk to me. What do you think? Yeah, the the Hemmings the Hemmings interface is just awful, um, and. And the ad for these two cars was um, embarrassing and really not acceptable. I mean, uh, they didn't bring a lot of money and they didn't deserve it. Not just not because the cars didn't deserve some attention, but because they just phoned this in. I mean, these photos are awful. They uh, and yeah. the fact that Hemmings, with as big a name as they have, I mean, Hemmings is. Uh, you know, just a huge brand in the auction world. How yeah. did they say, yeah, we'll run this the way this looks? They, yeah. You guys need to have some quality control, man. You need to, and you, you have cars with this kind of provenance that have has this kind of uh, potential for internet fervor. It's like, get somebody right. out there to photograph these things correctly, uh, no. make some films, do something, especially, and, and if you're listening to this on like a, a podcast or something, that these cars sound pretty amazing on paper. Uh, the idea of these two br almost nearly new cars with hardly any miles right. on them sounds fantastic. But when you do look at the pictures and you start seeing the cars, it's like oh, they're, they're terrible. Rough. They yeah. look like they have 150,000 miles, not so 50 weird. miles. I mean, it just doesn't yeah. make any sense. It's the weirdest lot I think I've ever seen auctioned off. Right. And but, uh, but I just an absolute abject failure. I agree with you, JP. Hemmings should have made a bigger splash with this lot. Yeah. Like they should have. Uh, you were kind of educating me yesterday that a, that a, a presser would have been in order for yeah, this, right? Yeah, press so release, let people know. EPK, yeah. just go and hire a filmmaker to come out and make a film about it. Do something. Two consecutive number. Just, yeah. But to just do snapshots with an iPhone, uh, you know, just, in you know, one car's in the shadows and the other cars. I mean, they're just in a dirt mm, driveway awful. with. A, I mean, it's just ugh. Terrible, terrible. Really, Anyways, really, really yeah. weird. Okay. Very big All right. Failure. So, uh, JP, you did win that one because you were, man, you're 56. You were, you were really. I wanted to bet 55 one. for uh, for Back to the Future 1955, but yeah. I wasn't thinking. You still, it right. would have been further away and still would have won because yeah. I, I, at 68 grand for two brand new, essentially DeLoreans, uh, I was way off. So, mm -hmm. anyways, uh, JP, arguably our most interesting car yesterday yeah. was the. Uh, forgive me, I got to squint because I don't have my contacts. Uh, the Crown Super Coach yeah. School Bus uh, from 1961. This car, uh, this this bus has uh, largely been restored. Um, JP, it's got a seven-liter Detroit diesel motor that'll probably just idle on up to the moon and back. Uh, it's clearly been repainted and gone through. And then um, what I think you and I probably both appreciate is they kind of gutted the uh, the bus seats and created what is. I mean, arguably a small event space. They've got a TV and a sound system in there, and it's all like kind of new carpet, and and you can sort of paint your entertainment device uh, as you like. Uh, this would be great to go to Coachella. This would be great to go to Burning Man. This would be great to park outside the Art Walk in Las Vegas uh, when those return, hopefully this summer. I mean, this you know your imagination can run wild. What what you could do essentially is like a 
it's almost like a plain fuselage because adults can stand up in there. Um, and yet it's got this really cool early 60s, probably late 50s design of a school bus. And it's all redone. Um, one cool little thing is this car, this this coach uh, is offered out of California. So it's on a California black plate. I had just a really neat lot. Mm -hmm. Um, it was only at like six grand when we were looking at it yesterday. Um, so I seven thousand dollars maybe. So I bet up to fifteen, and JP, you bet up to eighteen. Well, this thing had a great close in the final hour, uh, and it brought twenty seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So congratulations to the uh, consigner, JP. You won that lot. And uh, to whoever owned it, uh, I hope you are as uh, as wild as I imagine you would have to be to take on such a project. I think you could have a lot of fun with that thing. What a cool what a cool thing to see on BAT, huh? All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, moving on. Uh, the Acura Legend on cars and bids, JP. This was the like first year. You were telling us that the '91 was one of those um, split model years. '91 had some models that were the early platform. And then like our car uh, was also a 91, but it was the new platform. So this was the Legend Coupe with uh, like 100,000 miles. Um, I think it was out of Texas or something. It was on cars and bids. Wasn't getting a lot of love. I said seven grand, you said 7,500. The car sold for $6,800 uh, and I got the win. Bad photos there. Yeah, this car really suffered from just another poor ad. I mean, that's the thing. Over and over again, I don't know why people can't get this through their head. Hire someone to take some photos of your car or go online and get somebody get a tutorial. I mean, this car, the guy did a walk around video in the ad. Uh, and, you know, he just like, took his iPhone and walked around the car. And it happened to be probably later in the day. The light was just a little bit better. And it represented the car a million times better than any of these photos. These photos are just okay. terrible. People, don't try to take a photo when it's sunny out everyone thinks that oh it's a beautiful sunny day we're gonna take great pictures no it's probably gonna take terrible pictures um find some shade find a parking garage find something it this just this car especially this yeah i mean it really is a kind of a cool car and the interior looks immaculate um but i think it would have brought some more money if the pictures weren't just so awful because i think anybody that would consider would have considered this car probably looked at the first few pictures and said eh, and just moved on um, yeah. But if they had you, some good photos, they would have stopped and realized it's a pretty nice car. Do you think that car would have done better on a different platform? Um, no, actually. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, BAT is always you know, going to bring the most money for anything obscure. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how something like this would do on the Rad for Sale when that ever launches. No. But I think cars and bids, this is a good place for it because it's not a lot of money. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the kind of car that's not very special. Um, so there's not a ton of cars on cars and bids. Cars and bids only does like yeah. five to 10 cars a day. Uh, uh, so it's that, not going to get, no. yeah, if that on a good day. Yeah. So it, you know, if it's, whereas on BAT, it would be buried with 50 to 60 cars a day. Uh, so would someone just pass yeah. right over it? I don't know. Yeah. Well, so here's um, the interesting thing, JP, one more question and we'll get off this lot. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, sorry guys. Now I that I the picture's up. Yeah, now that Hearst Media is running BAT, it seems like they'll say yes to almost anything. But mm. early on, when it was still a San Francisco company and it was sort of independently owned, um, it's like they had a bouncer working the door and they turned most dudes away. Uh, yeah. Do you think this lot would have been accepted by the old BAT or would it have just been like, mm, not special enough? Uh, I think uh, I think it would have been because I mean it is a kind of a special car, but I don't think they would have allowed these photos. They would have demanded Ooh, uh, okay. a better ba block of photos. They would have said, "Hey, yeah. uh, get out there and you know." If they would, if someone would have would have submitted the car with these photos, they'd have rejected right. it. Uh, That's or they would have rejected it. But if someone took yeah. really good photos of this car and submitted it, they probably would have accepted it. So yeah. So you make you scratch your head why Doug DeMiro is allowing such pedestrian stuff to roll right. across the site, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, right. it's th that that whole thing on all the sites. This kind of lowering expectations thing. It's the whole reason why these communities started is because you could buy a car uh, from an auction, something other than eBay, uh, yeah. and you felt like, okay, because these people are part of the community, um, enthusiast community, that I can trust what I'm seeing. And it seems like a lot of crap is getting kind of thrown in. And it's making yeah. making us a little bit uh, weary of what we're buying here. Not All so right. Bad.
All right, JB, we'll stay on Cars of Biz, but let's go to a different direction. The 2011 BMW 328i Touring uh, manual transmission car, not exactly an enthusiast colorway with the sort of dark blue, gray, metallic, uh, a black dash, tan seats, and wood trim. Uh, but by all accounts, even just a little touch of wheel spacers uh, gives this car an athletic and purposeful stance. And you and I um, have seen time and time again that the Touring, the wagons uh, from the 3 Series, uh, bring way more money than the coupes and the sedans. Yeah. Uh, makes you wonder why BMW doesn't produce more of them or spend a little more attention on a current wagon platform and give it the full M treatment. Uh, finding one with M bodywork and M suspension and M seats is really hard to find. Uh, but usually when a wagon comes across and it's a manual, you and I jump on it. And this one was a nice one. Uh, I think just 80,000 miles here, JP. I can't remember where it was located, uh, but I said 16. Uh, you bet the under at 15 and this car sold for $19,000. So, yeah, I mean, this is a nice car. It's You just said something that was interesting, that we're seeing that the wagons get more money than the sedans and the coupes. And I you think, think that's I might, fair? Uh, I, certainly for the sedans, but I think I take exception with that on the coupe angle because yeah. you know what we haven't seen at all? And this yeah. is something that I pay attention to. I am a huge closet fan of the E92, E90 platform. Uh -huh. um, and I, am, I have been waiting for a super clean two-door coupe with what a manual. Straight. Yeah, they yeah. do not exist. I mean, they're out there. Wow. Uh, but they, you think these wagons are rare with manuals? It seems like the yeah. coupes are even more rare. I mean, th there's three, there's uh, 335s pop up. Uh, yeah. But I, I actually haven't really seen any of those on any of the auction sites either. But like a 328 with a manual in a, in a two-door coupe is such a fantastic car. It's a way more reliable setup. Yeah. Um, it has plenty of power, and it's a good handling car. And I think they just look magnificent. Oh, um, and, so, but so I haven't seen one on any of the platforms the entire time we've been doing this for half a year already. Friend of the bid nerds, Jeff Westfall, the uh, mm -hmm. racing driver has one that he calls affectionately schnitzel uh <laughs> and his car is uh forced induction so he's got it mm. you know he's friends a 335 with, uh, yeah fish new and it's boosted mm. it's a stick shift and he's got uh bbs lm style wheels on the car uh and he's been driving that car for years i i would say he's pushing like 170,000 miles because every time he has to go testing with a client in LA, he's mm. driving down to Button Willow and Willow Springs yeah. and all that stuff from the Bay Area. So he, he commutes all over the state in that car and that's his that's his baby. Um, and it's a it's like you said, it's that unicorn. It's a it's a manual coupe with the big motor and and he loves that thing. It's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So all right, cool. Uh, last car, which was um, almost a total disaster. Listen, <laughs> JP, everybody knows I love Italian cars. Even I cannot defend this just design catastrophe. Um, this is the Fiat Auto Group's Pontiac Aztec, if you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. Um, it's uh, it's the Fiat Coupe with the two liter 16 valve turbocharged motor. This thing didn't even make 200 horsepower. That's a manual transmission front wheel drive and they let Pin and Farina do whatever they wanted here. And um, it, it's just, it's too high design for design's sake. Like none of the lines on this car make sense. It's awkward to look at. Uh, it bothers me when I stare at it. Um, and this color doesn't help it at all. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that being said, these were never sold in the United States. Somebody brought one in and I think it was on an Ohio plate, JP. So it was titled in the States. It had reasonable miles, like, I don't know, let's say 70,000 miles. It's a 95, it's on Bring a Trailer. Let that be known, it's on Bring a Trailer and this car still didn't break 10 grand. I said nine grand. You said eight grand. The car sold for ninety five hundred dollars. So uh, I tallied three wins to your two, and that was yesterday. Wow. All right. Well. Uh, okay. So that was yesterday's cars. The most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer uh, and Hemmings. Boy, I think our lot yesterday was interesting, but it wasn't you know, like none of the cars were really cars that we really were yeah, super excited I, about. It was just you and I weren't fighting yeah. over any of them. Yeah. I saw her first. No, I saw her first. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's get to today's cars. We have some pretty interesting picks today. I, I feel better uh, about the lot that we have today, or at least I, I, you know, not only are the cars interesting today, some of them are cars that I really, really like. Um, we're talking platform here. To, uh, I want to kind of focus on 
uh, cars and bids a little bit. Our, the car that yep. we're going to focus on today is, uh, no pun intended, a Focus RS. <laughs> yeah, um, right. You know, so here's a, yeah. tell us about the Focus RS and then, then I, I, I'd like to talk about yeah. the platform. Yeah, so PCAR market is happy that the focus is on cars and bids. Let's mm. just put it to you that way. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, JP. Uh, so this, this 2018 Ford Focus RS is an absolute homologation special, and it's a car that they've been selling overseas, the RS, which is their complete rally spec. You're talking about a four-cylinder turbocharged manual transmission, all-wheel drive car with a mega whopping 350 horsepower and 350 pound foot of torque i mean every enthusiast in the world would enjoy driving this car uh this one only has 10,000 miles i can't remember where it was offered out of but no stories here jp clean carfax uh it's gonna probably run out of warranty in the next year here um and and the 2018 was the final edition so they only sold it here JP, I think for like two years, they didn't they didn't sell them for very long. And I think they're destined to hold their value pretty well. Uh, but what's interesting is that these cars are pretty expensive. Um, you know, they were fifty thousand dollars when they were brand new. And our car out of Calabasas, California, let me see if I can bring it in here, uh, is sitting JP at thirty five thousand dollars on 17 bids with about an hour to go on cars and bids and now by all account this is still an over forty thousand dollar used car um and it appeals to well while every performance enthusiast would enjoy driving it i still feel that the general appeal on this car is to somebody that's in like probably a male in his 20s to early 30s mm -hmm. and so i turn it over to you because i think you have an interesting take about that demographic and cars and bids platform yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. The, the the performance of this car is stellar, and some big names are really into these. I mean, uh, Matt Farah famously bought one of these personally. He, like, this was his personal car. Uh, right. And that, you know, that says something. A guy like him drives pretty much everything drive and anything yeah. uh, and yeah. does, and he chose to actually own one of these. Um, I personally know... Uh, people that have like, there's a kid in uh, in Las Vegas that fits the um, the demographic perfectly that sure. that late twenties early thirties performance thing yeah. and uh, yeah, and he just owns autocross uh, in our region um, yeah. you know but these cars are a bit like the yoga and the vegan and the CrossFitters <laughs> that you know you know it if they have one because they can't shut the heck up about it um, right yeah. My focus. Yeah, well, no, no, they never say my focus. Yeah. They say my focus RS. They oh, are right, very, right. very, very keen on making sure that you know that they have the <laughs> RS version, not just a focus. Um, oh, uh, awesome. And to their credit, there is a big difference. But, you know, that demographic, and it seems like that is the Doug DeMuro demographic. And I think that it seems to me that cars and bids, despite what they put out regularly that they're doing so well, they seem like they're floundering. Um, they, you would think that this deep into their run, they've only been around for about a year, that they would be doing a lot more cars uh, per day than they are. It seems like they've been doing five, six, ten cars a day at most yep. since they started. Uh, we haven't seen it slow down. We haven't seen it go up. But what we have seen is the uh, quality of cars steadily decline. Fewer and fewer six-figure cars are coming on here. Um, and we see a lot of this boy racer type stuff. Focus RSs, Audi uh, S lines, um, you know, Volkswagens, BMWs of the same era and these, you know, kind of the mo what, we, what Doug DeMuro would call modern enthusiast cars. And they are great right. cars, a lot of them, but they fail to sell at really any higher numbers than you would get at CarMax or whatever. Uh, right. And I think that's specifically because the owners uh, or not the owners but the would-be buyers of these cars the right. demographic uh these people these kids don't have the cash and it's not that right. they can't afford to buy one of these cars because they could easily go and qualify for a loan i mean a, a right. loan on a 15 twenty thousand dollar fairly late model car is relatively easy to acquire but it's not something that you're gonna it, it's very difficult it's to say, oh, okay yeah there's a focus rs on this auction site and i want that i'm going to go through the trouble of getting pre-qualified on it and possibly not yep. be able to buy it that ain't happening the first question the bank is going to ask you is how much do you need to borrow and this guy doesn't know what it's going to sell for yet yeah. so that's that creates i'll, I'll tell you tomorrow i yeah. mean what is yeah. that yeah, yeah. It's like, it, it, you're, yeah you're starting off with a catch 22 and, yeah. and you make some good points jp i'm going to give you because i work for stratus i have some information um so you know bring a trailer uh sells about 
yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool, dude. Somebody's somebody's <laughs> got an auction they gotta go get to. They're like, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna miss that focus RS. I gotta get in front of a computer like so I can bid. Oh, that's so funny, dude. I wish you'd I, I, No, down. I'm not saying that they're they're realizing that they're missing our show, so they gotta get it in front of a computer so they can watch. <laughs> no one does. Uh, Bring a trailer uh, sells about 70 cars a day at less than $26,000 a copy. And up wow. till about last summer, they really struggled to sell a six figure car. Mm. Uh, despite running awesome lots, uh, when it came to six figure cars, they really struggled. But man, I would say the pandemic was a blessing to them. And, mm. and with a lot of people, the, the market, the real sort of blue chip and the expensive stuff, actually enjoying a spike in values instead of a softening while most of the country was not going to work, which is the biggest head scratcher. I still can't describe it to you why that happened. Um, bring a trailer started to get traction with the bigger cars. And I have to wonder while, while Doug's trying to incubate and nurture this thing to life, um, you know, his cars and bids uh, site uh, that, that bring a trailer success with six figure cars, uh, set the bar even higher for Doug DeMiro and Cars and Bids to gain traction and really take a piece of BAT's act, uh, you know, a market share in some way. And now, before Doug DeMiro can say that he's safely up and running and it's a perpetual watch that's just going to keep perfect time, now he's got competition on his left and his right. And he's, he, I'm not saying he's in big trouble, but it's not going to get any easier for him uh, or anybody else in this space. So interesting well, right yeah it seems like he uh you know he declared war <laughs> on multiple fronts uh without right. realizing it you know he got in the game thinking yeah. he had one uh one big uh you right. know fish to fry, and, and now right. it's like yeah. oh wait i got these guys on my front line and now i got five other enemies coming on my on my uh are flanking me on my rear <laughs> like okay now what do we do uh yeah. so i you know and i think the only thing that he could do or should do to uh to re to get to stay in the game and grow is to uh -huh. be more selective and it seems yeah. like they're doing the opposite um when bring a trailer is basically saying all right we're gonna lower the barriers to entry then right. that means there's an opportunity to raise the barrier at entry which seems counterintuitive but just like you mentioned a nightclub gets yeah. uh, nightclubs will put a line out front when there's only 10 people inside exactly. and they'll only let in the hot girls and that gets uh -huh. that creates a huge line and that's how you fill a nightclub right so yep. that's what you guys should be doing at cars and bids and i think the reason why he's you sit here and go why how, how come they don't know this and I like Doug DeMuro videos. I'll admit it. I enjoy watching his videos, uh -huh. um, but I do have a big problem with his films, uh, and that is that for all the years that he's been doing it, um, mm. he has never upped his production game. And I pretty much get why. It's There's no reason for him, if he went out, if mm. he did twice to three times as much work <laughs> to make a video uh, yeah. and make it look good, right? Because he'll just park uh -huh. a car in a Kmart parking lot. Uh, it'll be and sprinkling monologue. out, and he'll just, yeah, yeah he'll go through, and he'll set the camera up in one angle he'll maybe yeah. do some handheld b-roll the lighting is always terrible it, it, the sound <laughs> is always herky-jerky i mean it's worse than the sound that we have today right oh my god he does yeah. not care about aesthetics oddly no. enough when, when or how he's he a, dresses or how he dresses or any of those things right he's, yeah. he's he is a nerd and he is our people when it comes down to it but he has this barrier there's this disconnect where he's talking about the aesthetics of a car but he doesn't further those aesthetics into his work and right. I think, um, and again, it wouldn't <laughs> make him credit. any more money, right? Why would no. he? Why would he put more work in it? He's still going to get ten million views on a on a video <laughs> with the least amount of effort. I get that. Great, cool. God, God love him. Yeah. But if he had an attention to that aesthetic detail, um, if he had that ability, I think that should be put into the cars and bids site. And the same sensibilities that he takes to. His, his films, his reviews that are very good, but technically ugly. Uh, if he brings that to his auction site, and that is hurting yeah. him, and that's why they're not growing. That's my take on it. So yeah. I think and that. Oh, go ahead. It, it takes a lot of courage and gumption to stand over that, right? And say, yeah. look, I'm struggling to pay the rent, but you can't come in here with those photos, or you can't come in here with that car. Yeah. Uh, that it, you you got to have. I mean, you got to have a sack, right? Like, yeah. you know, like you got to uh, you got to up your yeah. game, man. You got to get your customers to up your game, and it will hurt at first because that will right. 
deter a certain factor of people but when you start seeing ads that are always hot that they're always good like if he just yeah. said no your pictures have to be this minimum quality and right. every car that you looked at on cars and beers like oh man that looks really good even though it's a piece of junk like our i'll bring it yeah. up our chrysler baron our 1988 chrysler baron yeah. the 1988 chrysler baron right i mean that car even when it's good as a piece of junk we made it look so beautiful that it yep. actually sold, and now you see Chrysler Barons every other week for sale. Um, but you know, it, it you just it's not a, just about the car; it's about no. the ad, and and it reflects everyone else. No. If I have a six-figure car, I don't want it next to an ad for a Civic or uh, uh, an Acura Legend that looks like it was just shot in a, in a church parking lot. It's terrible. Yeah. Doug Demiro, JP Polnick just calls you out. What are you gonna do about it, bro? What's up, oh, Doug Demiro? <laughs> Well, there you go. Uh, I, JP, I think that was a great take. I, I agree with you. Um, I, we I are for think, hire, Doug. You can hire yeah. us as consultants. Big nerds will come out and help you out. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're so genius. We'll, yeah. We can fix it. It's, it's, like, uh, an Irish plum, it's yeah. like an Irish plumber looking at Niagara Falls going, <laughs> I can fix it. Yeah. It's pretty easy to uh, to criticize from the chair that we're in. Uh, I will, yeah. I will yeah. you know, acquiesce to that. Uh, you know, Doug's yeah. got a lot of... Uh, acquiesce, that's the right word. Uh, Doug's got a lot of work in front of him. We're armchair quarterbacks yeah. in the online auction space. Yeah. We know yeah. we know what's best. I mean, just ask PCAR Market. Look what we did mm, for them. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I know they've increased our viewership by a hundred percent by At having least, four yeah. people watch us. Uh, <laughs> we are rooting for Doug, though. Let me just be Absolutely. very, very clear. We're right rooting for all these sites: PCAR Market, yeah. uh, Hemmings, uh, Cars and Bids. I think it's great for car enthusiasm. Uh, yeah. And it's one of those things because car enthusiasm is dying, right? I mean, yeah. it looks like it's expanding, but really the writing's on the wall. How many young people are really getting into this? That's a whole other conversation. Uh, a car like this, back to this RS, is the kind of car that keeps enthusiasts and car enthusiasm alive. Uh, oh, and we car. want a car like this. So, all right, back to this car. It's sitting at 35000 yeah. with 17 bids. That's a pretty dang good number. Where's yep. this going to land? I still think that again that color, the final edition, uh, mm. just ten thousand miles. JP, no stories. Um, I think it's going to break forty. I'm going to go forty-one thousand dollars. What say you? Yeah, I'm. I'm with you there. I'm strong on this car. Um, did they make them in any other color? Yeah, like but like three colors, like black and red, and okay. that's it. I don't know maybe if I've so. ever. I don't know if I've ever seen or noticed. I mean, maybe it's just like yeah. this is the kind of car you notice because it's this bright color. If it were oh, black man. or red, it would just look like any yeah. other hot hatch. So um, I, I will just go out that if I had this car and I would love to have it, I would paint mm -hmm. the wheels. I can't stand the shiny black wheels, no matter what the color of the car is. So I would mm -hmm. do like a, a silver wheel or uh, you know like a titanium colored wheel. But that shiny black is too cheap for me i can't i can't stand well yeah it takes Ugh. away the definition of a, what is a pretty gar good looking wheel yeah. um what was your bid Forty-one thousand, buddy all right i'll go 40 i'll say it uh it, we'll, we'll go, get it. We'll, i'll just go right underneath um yep. all right well let's uh i s wasted a lot of time talking about uh, right. doug we'll, demuro we'll audience through. so let's let's cruise let's, through let's go to long island and talk about the porsches the porsche the well, let's porsche go let's talk about the porsches are you doing your due diligence on your porsches Oh, well, that's PCAR, why you're watching B Car Market. The P Car Market, yeah. All right, here P -car we go. Market so, live. Probably sound in Boston. more like we're from Boston. I know, right? Yeah. It's a wicked cool Porsche. Uh, all right, so the Porsche. P -car, P Car Market has sourced for us, uh, for our leisure, to 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 just turn all over a 2003 996 Carrera 4 cab with a manual transmission, just 42,000 original miles. Um, JP, I'll let you just start talking about this triple black beauty and those wheels that you and I both like while I search and find out if they speak to the IMS bearing because I can't remember if they did or they didn't. Well, I mean, this is a Mark II with a 3.6 liter, and those are the MYO2 uh, 996 wheels, which are really one of the greatest looking Porsche wheels of all time oh, and really man, they are. look Agreed. smart and sharp on a 996. 996s is really uh, the wrong wheel can really kind of mess up a 996, and some of the factory wheels that came out in that era were awful, uh, but the MYO2 was not one of the wheels that were awful. The MYO2s look really good on 993s, by the way, too. Uh, yeah. But this is, a, this is a really nice car. It's black on black. I mean, it's a convertible. So if you're a cabrio-phobe, it's not going to be for you. But if you're someone, uh, you know, who uses a word like visceral, everybody talks about Porsches being visceral. I always say it, it's like, okay, then, you know, but they'll, they'll say, oh, uh, so you have to have a coupe. It's like, well, the convertible means is more visceral because you're part of the environment. 
I'm a big fan of coupes. I think this is a great car. I wish it weren't a, a Carrera 4. I'm not a big fan of the all-wheel drive, even though it is very good. Um, you know, on that platform, right? On that, that platform. Was their, that was their third generation of 911 to have an all-wheel drive. Correct? Yeah. And 964, 993, 996. Correct, and the, the you know the 996 uh, you know the C4S the wide body version, um, unlike an S of a 997, does not have a larger engine. So if you get like something a C2 996 uh, is arguably way better than a C4S when it comes to performance because it's the same powertrain, but the C4 is heavier because it's wider uh, yep. and it has, you know, an extra 200, 300 pounds in the front with that diff. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this car would be a terrific driver car if it didn't have the all wheel drive. Um, it still is a terrific driver's car with the all, uh, driver's car with the all wheel drive, but it would certainly feel uh, peppier and more nimble uh, did Man. it not have that extra weight in the front. But this is still just a terrific car to drive around. It is odd that the, um, that the C4s in the narrow body were only cabs, correct? Uh, Isn't that weird? Yeah, at least you in know, 03. In 03 you know, in that were, year, that's yeah. Us, that's us nerding out. The 2003, the only C4 platform was a cab. Uh, yeah. It's kind of counterintuitive. Like, I need a convertible, but I need all-weather wheel protect, all weather protection. You could get uh, a C4S coupe, uh, you know, in all-wheel drive that year. Um, but you couldn't you know, get a three, narrow yeah. body. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah just bizarre. I, yeah, Porsche, go figure. They're... <laughs> Sometimes they do some stuff where you're like, uh, what? Yeah. But uh, JP, you know, there is, uh, uh, PCAR Market says there is no mention of an IMS bearing upgrade uh, on on this car's history. So at 42,000 miles, mm. that's pretty low miles for a yeah. car that is pushing 18 years of age. Um, it, you know, it, Do you think that's still a scary range to that not address a, it? That is an or absurdly would, scary. No, let me ask you, the, I, I don't understand yeah. what you just said. Did PCAR Market not mention the IMS, or no, did it specifically are, say that they don't know? They, they literally say there is no record of an IMS bearing upgrade or some additional maintenance information is provided on the Carfax. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, so they're saying we don't know that it's been done. Um, and what I'm asking you is, would the bid nerds recommend that because you're just at 40,000 miles. Like if this car is at 80,000 miles, there's no yeah. IMS, you figure, well, go ahead and drive it. Yeah. But at 40,000 miles, uh, wouldn't you recommend that whatever you budget for this car, you should budget an extra 2,500 to three grand to go get that done preemptively? You are because, sharply in the danger yeah. zone. And the problem right. here is even if you budget that money and say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the IMS the second I get this car, it may already be too late. Um, we oh, know okay. people personally uh, who have, you know, like uh, yeah. our friend. I'm not. I'm not going to mention Buddha. Names. Uh, oh, well, okay, I guess you're going to mention names. Uh, you know, <laughs> the poor guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, had a 30,000 mile uh, C4S yeah, uh, of the brutal. same year. Beautiful car, and uh, it, with an IMS upgrade, and that failed uh, because yeah. the previous one was already failing. There are so many little things, and I say this all the time when people ask me about 996s. There are so many things that go wrong with these engines early in their years, uh, right. early in their miles. And if you in drove the lifetime. car normally in their lifetime, yeah, if you bought if you bought this car brand new and drove it for 30,000 miles, n like a normal person, put 10,000 miles on it a year, right? Uh, yeah. Or more, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, as, those, as those problems come up, they were covered by warranty. Things like camshaft seals or rear main seals. Mm -hmm. Those are not detrimental. Those are not hand grenades like the IMS, but they are expensive to take care of. Um, and it was very, you know, if you had this car and it had 20,000 miles and it was only a year too old and, and you had a you sprung an oil leak well you just bring it to the dealership and they give you a uh you know a cayenne to drive around for a week while they fix it right and you don't get a three thousand dollar bill well you buy this car low miles those things weren't covered uh those things weren't taken care of while the car was still under warranty and they make problems like ims is oh, even more scary worse so, yeah. uh, you know and because this is an auction if you were looking at this car on a private site like i don't know craigslist or auto trader or at a car lot you could say all right i'm interested in the car you could you could go to the uh seller and say i'm interested in the car let's negotiate a price have a pre-purchase inspection done where you not only Correct. just have them look at the car, but they do an oil analysis. They check the uh, the everything. you know everything, yeah. do a bore score, yeah. the, the whole it's, you know, just spend the money. Yeah, spend it's, the five hundred dollars. Yeah, it it's is money well spent. It's more forensic than just a brief inspection. You know, yeah. like they yeah. really examine, and you need to do that because again. Uh, a problem that could sprout up could be, you know, almost financially catastrophic, and you yeah. don't want that. You just want to enjoy yeah. the car. But, yeah. You know, On a car that's that. worth twenty to twenty-five thousand uh, dollars, the engine blows up. That's twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars to replace. 
Yeah. Sorry, that's just how much they are. So this your car could be worth zero if that thing goes wrong, uh, which is yeah. what has always hurt the 996 and early 997 market. Um, it's not nearly as bad as everyone says. I mean, we talk about this, and it, it's Internet stuff, and people get so worked up over it, and it's really just a very small percentage of the cars that this actually happens to. But it's still, you know, I mean, it's something you got. You can't, you can't not talk about it. You can't talk about a car like this and not talk about it. It's an elephant in a room. Uh, totally. And uh, so, I don't know. I really like this car. I think it's beautiful, and I think it'd be a great driver. It's a great starter 911 oh, for someone. Gorgeous car. Um, that car. You know, 300 the, the plus horsepower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 320 horsepower, JP. Six-speed manual. Uh, and like I said, by the time they got around to this third generation of the all-wheel drive, it's, mm. it's not a bad system. Certainly, the cars are a little bit heavier, but, I mean, you know, just for – for regular driving that is yeah. more than enough power to to blow away almost anybody this car will keep up with just about anything on the road yeah. it is not a slouch great uh, daily so. driver well but okay oh. so so this is you know we're talking about platform stay so here it is yeah. and the downside of buying something from an auction like cars and bids where the buyers don't have the cash liquid they have to go get a loan so that restricts right. how many people can actually buy a car something like this okay the person that might want to buy this car probably has the money has the access has can liquid yeah. go said an auction on it but you can't ppi a car before you buy it an auction so if you it's win really, this car it's yours yeah. and yep. now you're like well okay so unless that information is there in the ad and is part of the selling package if p car said all right you know what if you want to get more money for this thing you gotta go check the ims you gotta go do you know whatever and put that information here that's going to bring more money yeah. Uh, you can't do that. You're really throw, rolling some dice on this car. Chances are you'll get lucky because it they're not. It's not that bad. But that one in a you know few thousand, mm, that's enough to kind of go. All right. Mm. Well, <laughs> here it is, JP. Listen to this. Right. So this car's offered out of Montgomery, Texas. It's an 03 with only 42,000 miles. It's sitting at sixteen thousand dollars with about two hours to go on just two bids and something that we have noticed as, we sp as we've spent more time on p car market is that they really depend on close of auction flurries like it yeah. doesn't matter what the week of action suggests leading up to the close of auction this car will make its mark uh and we see it time and time again particularly on p car market with the later model cars cars from this century something that was constructed in the last say 20 to 25 years uh, cars are bringing basically around market value, but they're not seeing they, this consigner and the platform is not seeing that money until the auction is closing. Uh, so with all that in mind, and despite the fact that we probably think this car needs the IMS bearing to be done, um, I still think this car has a shot to make 30 grand. You know, mm. does that, uh, would you agree with my take on what we're seeing from P car market? Does that sound accurate? Yeah. Um, cause I think a lot of people still oddly enough, don't, really consider the ims thing they just look at low miles some people are just yeah. like oh as low miles it must so be true. good uh you know there's a lot of people that buy these things with really knowing a lot about them um That's and too bad. you know you got to wonder about that but you know and again chances are it's probably going to be fine buy this car get the ims uh done uh and then drive it home or ship it you know because th th that's the thing that sucks this car would be fantastic to go buy uh yeah. you know and just fly in pick it up and uh and drive home but i don't know if i would drive a 40,000 mile 996 home i would yeah, drive an 80,000 no mile 996 right. uh, no problem but 40 yeah. with no ims that's scary uh, all, right. all right where's it going to land okay jp it's only got two bids but i i I've, I've stopped doubting PCAR market's ability to bring market value by the close of auction. Yep. I am going to lay it out there and say $30,000 gets this car home. Um, my guess is that's probably the reserve. Um, mm -hmm. And so whether or not the car sells at that, I, I bet the person's pretty proud of this car uh, because okay. it has low miles. Um, it's so, the right color. Yeah, it's the right color. But uh, I, I say it's going to hit 27. It's a cab and it's a four. Um, okay. And I love cabs. Uh, I'm not a cabriophobe, but cabs do not bring the money. Yeah, but using your argument, somebody will see triple black manual and 40,000 miles and think it's a good one. I, I, I actually think that will work against your bid. And so it'll be interesting to see which one of us is yeah, right. Because I, yeah. I, do, I just, I don't know, man. I, anyway, if it doesn't, I'll be mad at Picard Market, not you. <laughs> well, as someone who owns uh, you know, a .2 997 that's basically a C2 cab base, um, it's not a four. Uh, I, def I definitely like the idea of seeing 
uh, black on black uh, low end 911s worth more money because uh, at some point I'm going to probably sell that. Um, so there it is. All right, let's uh, let's move it along. We're uh, we're going long here, so we got a couple more cars, and then uh, yep. I got to get to an airplane. I got to get on an airplane, and go back to Vegas. <laughs> get out of here! I got to get okay, an JP, Uber. Let's jump over to bring a trailer and look at a seventeen thousand mile nineteen ninety six Dodge Ram Indy five hundred edition with no reserve. Mm. Uh, in nineteen ninety six, Dodge's brand new Viper Coupe GTS was invited to be the pace car at the Indy 500 and Dodge who never ever gets that honor because they hadn't been making performance cars for about 25 years at that point um, was not going to let this marketing this golden marketing opportunity go without uh, taking advantage of it so what they did is they brought um, I don't know let, let's call it 25 or 50 uh, Dodge Viper GTS is to Indy so that they could have people test drive the car and whatnot. And they were all painted this sort of cobalt blue with the white racing stripes. And of course, one of those cars was in fact the pace car for the Indy 500. But what they did is instead of trucking all these cars on semis, they had each one of those cars towed behind an identical liveried Dodge Ram pickup truck in this special Indy 500 edition. So in other words, if the $100,000 Dodge Viper GTS was too rich for your blood, you could go to your local store and buy a $25,000 Dodge Ram 1500 painted in the same color. And that's what these are here. They had all the decals. They had these special 17-inch uh, wheels. Um, and the cars used at that time the biggest V8 that Dodge had to offer, which was a 5.9 liter V8 that made about 245 horsepower and about 355 pound foot of torque. And it sounded like a muscle car at idle. Uh, these trucks were all really cool. They made, uh, I don't know, something like 100 of them or 500 of them or whatever it was. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this particular car uh, is largely unused with just 17,000 miles. And somebody spent a grip of cash kind of rebuilding that motor into what sounds like something uh, you'd find on the starting light of a drag race. Um, you know, forged crank sets, forged uh, connecting rods, uh, roller cams, ported and polished uh, throttle bodies, the whole shebang. By all it, uh, accounts, it's uh, normally aspirated, but it's been completely massaged. I would wonder if something like that would pass smog in some place like California or Nevada, where we still do the exhaust uh, sniff test. Um, I think you would have to register that like in Washington, JP, would you not? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this truck just seems so stupid. The idea that it like <laughs> it looks like a Viper truck. Um, I you know, love it. We, I like I said, we it. really got to move it along because we're having some yeah. issues here. Uh, what I'm most okay. intrigued by this ad is that they had a live on bring a trailer license plate um, thing on the front. It's like, where do you get one of those? Um, uh, you know, I don't know. Wow, I guess from uh, Hearst Media. I guess, yeah. Uh, so where is this gonna land? All right, JP, so this car is at $15,000 with three and a half hours to go, offered to us out of your hometown. Say it for me in Washington. Snohomish, you... Washington. God bless you. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, so this vehicle is sitting at 24 bids, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think despite the engine work, I still think this car will bring uh, about twenty grand. I wrote 23000 but now as I'm thinking about the challenges of getting this car to pass smog in most of the lower 48, uh, I think it'll just reach twenty grand and stall out there. Uh, so what do you say? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to say 20. I mean, who wants this I, thing? I'm on 20. I mean, yeah. I'm on 20. Oh, Pick you're on 20. Oh, okay. 19, yeah, yeah. 19. 19. I'll go under. Nobody go. wants okay. this thing. Yeah. All right. It is, a, it, it, it appeals to a very small audience. Uh, JP, a more appealing truck can be found on, uh, as soon as I scroll on down, also on bring a trailer, um, offered out of Pasadena, California. Is this early 1997 mercedes-benz g320 europa i believe the europa name comes from the fact that these european models these early cars were on the shorter wheelbase in other words these are two-door cars they still have four seats but they're only two doors uh whereas when the g-wagon a couple of years later was finally officially imported into the north american market by mercedes-benz the only ones we got were the four-door long wheelbases so i believe and i could be wrong that europa simply means that it's a short wheelbase uh the 320 is mercedes absolutely venerable bulletproof put it in everything and just watch it go smooth as silk but plenty of just enough oomph to get it going in line six uh this particular vehicle has just 61,000 miles which jp is really low miles 
Uh, it's got black paint and black interior, but all the luxury accoutrement, uh, accoutrement uh, that would be found in the later North American cars. This isn't like the early G-Wagons that you could rinse out with a hose after playing around in the desert. This still looks like a Mercedes on the inside with the wood and the climate control and all the bells and whistles. So it's just kind of a neat tweener car. It's not the full Safari get it beat up. Uh, it's something you would still take care of, but it's not the long wheelbase opulent one we got in North America. And this car kind of fits a niche market. It's at an interesting price point too, JP. With less than an hour to go, it's at $38,000 on uh, just seven bids. So what's going on? What do you think is going to happen here? Uh, I don't know. Sorry, guys. We're trying to show you some pictures of this thing and we're really having some technical issues. Uh, where do you think this thing's going to land? Uh, JP, I think this car still has a, a little more life left. I'm going to go again to $41,000 and say that it gets there. And where is it at right now? Uh, 30, let me read it to you one more time, one more time, 38,383. Uh, and I'm sorry, how many miles does it have on it? Uh, uh 61,000 miles with uh, less than an hour to go out of Southern California. Yeah, I'll get, I'll, I'll bet the over on this one, say 43. I think it's That's a, a good it's guess. a real, I mean, it might, it could get up to 50. I mean, it's, um, these are pretty darn cool and people really like the two door ones. Uh, Doug DeMiro. Uh, has one. He has a convertible one. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, sorry guys. We'll it's put automatic. some links to these cars uh, in the body of the uh, of the video, so you can go take a look at pictures of the cars yourself if you can't see them. Uh, but yeah, we've gone long, uh, and we're definitely kind of fudged on the other side. So yeah, let's get to, let's talk about the last car real quick, and then we'll uh, okay. wrap it up. A, a car really we quick. <laughs> a car we a car we teased yesterday, but we were incorrect. It closes today. Is also on Bring a Trailer. It's a no reserve European market 1990 BMW. 320 Touring, which is a wagon, five-speed manual, two-wheel drive. Uh, what's interesting about this is it's an E30 platform, but in as it was an overseas E30, it mm. does have a 320 drivetrain, uh, which was uh, BMW's updated two-liter M20 um, in line six. Uh, manual transmission, five-speed. It's Laguna Green Metallic with gray cloth seats. Uh, this is offered to uh, the, the market at no reserve. Um, it's got 135,000 kilometers, which translates to 84,000 miles, but it's hmm. true mileage unknown and offered by friend of the bid nerds, Max Monahan at Lux Auto hmm. Sales out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Max is an incredible enthusiast, super knowledgeable. And if they're representing this car, I can tell you without question, it's going to be a really good vehicle. No nonsense, no stories. They only bring cars to market that they will stand behind. And by all accounts, this is a very cool car. Uh, some performance upgrades, JP. This has like a strut tower base, aftermarket wheels, springs and shocks, and so on. So I imagine for the right enthusiast, this is a super cool car. And yet, with less than a half an hour to go, it's sitting at just $19,000. So JP, hmm. what do you think about this one? I don't know. That's pretty strong uh, for a gray market kind of weirdo uh, three E30. Uh, but yeah. we've seen E30 prices really shooting up like everything else of that era. Uh, so where do you think it's going to land? Well, it's on 31 bids. So by mm. by far and away of all the cool E30s we've looked at recently, this one's getting the most action. Um, so I wrote $18,000 last night because last night mm. it was on just 11 bids at a $12,000. So this car has had a flurry as it's rolling into its final hour, and I'm going to have to redo my bid. Uh, so it's at 19 now. Uh, I'm going to go 25,000 bucks and just wow. say good good luck, Max. Good luck to the buyer. Uh, I think you're going to really enjoy this car because Max stands behind it. So 25 yeah, grand go. is my bid. I'll go over, go 26, maybe it makes 30. I don't think it makes 30, but it could. I mean, E30s uh, are the kind of car that will surprise you, uh, not just yep. in how fun they are to drive if you've never driven one, uh, but in how much they are worth. They, uh, boy, uh, with, with, with E30 M3s climbing in the six figures nowadays, yeah. why wouldn't a, a super rare gray market wagon a uh, two with a liter. It's a 320, a two liter, but it's an inline yeah. six. That's got to be fun to drive. Yeah, yeah, boy. I bet I'd you rev the heck out of it. Yeah, totally. 
All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for watching another edition of Bid Nerds. If this is the first episode you've ever seen, <laughs> watch another one. Uh, this one, we had a lot of technical issues, and we do apologize for that. But uh, we hope we had... Line. Right. I hope you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Anyway, uh, this is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer. Rad for sale. Hemmings auction. P car auction. Uh, my dog's auction and Michael Deeb's dog <laughs> auction site. Um, uh, yeah, subscribe, like, hit, you know, hit the notifications. Let other people know that we do this every day. It's Monday through Friday at about the nine o'clock hour, assuming our system doesn't blow up. Uh, and uh, usually when we're, we're both in our studio, so the audio is a little bit better. But uh, again, I, who cares about the uh, technical stuff? You guys just had fun listening to us and hanging out because you're nerds like us, right? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll go with that. Uh, bid nerds. I'm going to hit the little thing. Deeb, anything else you want to say before we uh, go away? No, let's just get this one over with. Let's get out of here, man. i got to go catch a plane. Uh, you guys, we'll see you tomorrow morning. I'll be back in Las Vegas, and uh, we'll do it again. Yeah. We'll do it right tomorrow. Uh, oh, wait, I forgot to say, we've got a third nerd tomorrow. Bradley oh, Brownell from Rad for Sale All and Radwood right. is going to join us tomorrow. So maybe yeah. he can update us on what's going on with getting their site launched. And, uh, yeah. and that show will definitely be entertaining because it's Bradley. And yeah. he said he might be coming to us from a uh, hotel bathroom somewhere. He's traveling tomorrow, so that'll be interesting. Right. But at least us two will be in studio. So thanks we for can. joining us. Go ahead. Oh, okay, well, that's it. We're leaving. See ya. Bye. Get those nerds! Nerds!